Hey everybody, it's Zeno here, and welcome to today's video. It's a bit of an interesting one. We are going to be talking about Xenoblade Chronicles 3, a game that uh, may exist, may not exist, but uh, it, some recent rumblings lead us to believe that it might exist. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Anyway, I'm joined by a panel of wonderful people who are also large fans, huge fans, amazingly, significantly large, I already said large fans, of Xenoblade Chronicles. Welcome, these people, all of you, introduce yourselves. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, I guess I'll So yeah, my name's Chase. <laughs> uh, I, I, you've probably seen me around on the Xeno Gamer channel before, you know, I, I've done a few videos. Please, hold your applause. Anyway, so, but yeah, I love, uh, having fun and, uh, you know, doing these videos with Xeno, so that's why I'm here. Anyway, yeah, the next person. Um, yeah, uh, I'm Layla. Uh, I, this is my first time on Xeno's channel, but I do a lot of streams and uh, gaming myself, and I've been a big follower of the Xenoblade uh, Chronicles series for a while now, and I'm very happy to be here. Thank you, Xeno. I am, I am, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm here. I, I... <laughs> you sure are. <laughs> I, I I I really I really love RPGs. Uh, one one I'm currently uh, addicted to is Final Fantasy XIV. And with that, um, I've been a fan of Xenoblade Chronicles for five years, ever since X. Yeah, I got that like 2016. So yeah, five years. I I, I love the series. <laughs> so, thank you. I. That's me. I think everybody else loves the series. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's amazing. That's that's great. That's good stuff, everyone. Um, yeah. You bet it is. You know. Oh my goodness. So, guys, how are you guys feeling? What what do you what do you think about these rumors that have been coming out recently? What's the deal? What's what's the deal? I think it's just inevitable. I'm honestly pretty excited. I'm really I'm really excited. I hope mm. that we're not being rused. Uh, if I'm honest. Honestly, in my opinion, it's just it's. An inevitable thing that's going to happen. We're going to get a new Xenoblade. That's we're going to obviously get one. I'm just excited to see what it's going to be. Like, is it going to be X2? Is it going to be Xenoblade Chronicles 3? What is it? I'm personally ecstatic for all the rumors that are going on, and I am. Well, yeah, I'm ecstatic because there's a lot of stuff that's being stirred up right now, and because stuff is being stirred up, that usually means something is cooking in the oven. And uh, what that is going to be, I am, I'm up for it. Whatever it is, Monolith, take me. So let's uh, let, let's cut to the chase. Yeah, get it. Yeah, because yeah. hey. <laughs> Chase is here. Hey. Good joke. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. Um, Xenoblade Chronicles Three. We've all been expecting this to happen, right? Like Xenoblade Two did really well, especially compared to like all of Monolith's past games. So uh, this was kind of a matter of time before it happened. And recently there's been rumblings, there's been a few different rumors, collaborating ideas that Xenoblade 3 is a real thing, and that it could be near completion and on its way as soon as next year. So this news comes to us by way of two main sources, the first being a fan interview with uh, Melly's voice actress Jenna Coleman, who might have let it slip that Xenoblade 3 is in production. Emphasis on might. We'll get into that in a little bit. Like we're gonna break down every single little detail here, guys. This is this is a, a deep dive into everything we might know about this game. Second is the fanbite news editor Imran Khan, who is a pretty reliable source in the games industry collaborated the uh, claims of Coleman, but also added potential new details about the plot and release window for the game. So plot? I hadn't heard about that one. Yeah. Oh. Uh, what, what, what did you, well, we'll, we'll what get we'll get into what? it then. You should have done your research, well, Pi. Yeah. Uh, I'm not very good at homework. <laughs> but so. we'll ex we'll explain it to you. This has been in the stages for anyway. a month, Pi. So the the Melia leak. So Jenna Coleman is the voice actress for Melia. She's also like since the first Xenoblade Chronicles become a bit more of a popular actor. Like I believe she was on Doctor Who. Uh, no, she's she's a really big actress. She's she's been on Doctor Who. She's been on Victoria. Like about uh, the Queen Victoria. He's been on The Crown, was it? I, was it The Crown? I don't think it was The Crown. But she's been in a lot of things since 2011. That's big. That's cool. What, what do you guys think about this? What, what? I just keep saying that over and over again, but like, what do we think about 
what she said. Is any of this true? Is there a Xenoblade in production that she did voice acting for a new game? I think there is a, um, a, a new Xenoblade, but she might have mistaken it for... She was probably doing Future Connected at that time, and she might have mistaken it for a new one. That's true, yeah. Like, I don't, I don't think Mali is going to reoccur. Well, the way I see it, um, as I think like, we're really all aware of in this case, none of this is... Inc we haven't really gotten incredibly concrete evidence, just a lot of really promising mm. suggestions that we might be getting a new game. But uh, I'm very hopeful. I am choosing to be very optimistic going into this. And I, it, it's very plausible that there might be a new game on the horizon. Uh, a lot of what she's saying could very much so mean other things. Like, could it be a new game? Uh, could it, like, as you said, could she be talking about her work on Future Connected? I feel as though that no matter what, we do have something on the horizon. We do have something coming for us, whether it be a new IP or, um, or a new Xenoblade game. Now, her exact words were, and I think they're doing another. So like, like you said, that can be interpreted in many different ways. Maybe she was working on Future Connected and yeah. that's what she thought was going to be the sequel. Because even in that interview, she also said she has never played a Xeno uh, Xenoblade game before. She's not very in the loop with what is going on with this series. So it could have been that. It could have been that Xenoblade 3 actually is the thing she's talking about. It could have been that uh, she was unknowingly referring to Xenoblade 2 and just didn't know that that came out years ago. Uh, or maybe she doesn't know anything and she just kind of said this, but like it's still going to happen anyway. <laughs> so we'll see on that. Uh, I want to go back, though, to like the actual source of this interview, where this came from. Why was she doing this interview? It was actually with a very small channel by the name of Din's Meteorite with only 33 subscribers. And the interview was posted back on July, not July, June 14th. And uh, just now really being picked up early August by the time this comes out, you know, not just now, but still recently. And uh, it's, it's been a perfect storm for this rumor, really, because that's when... Imran came out with this new report, which we're going to talk about here in a minute, which just collaborates everything. And just everything is looking really, really like uh, something is happening with Monolith Soft, and it's most likely going to be Xenoblade 3. So what I'm sort of wanting to ask is what makes you so confident that it is going to be a Xenoblade 3? Because this is a very, because this is very ambiguous and information that we've gotten so far. I think that it really comes down to what is working for Monolith. Uh, Xenoblade 2 was a huge seller. Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition was made for a reason, and that is to put the beginning of that saga on Nintendo Switch so that you have both of these games that are going to lead into um, Xenoblade 3, both on the Switch already. Uh, we also have Future Connected, which is in the name, and we're going to talk about this more later too, uh, that it's connected to the future of Xenoblade Chronicles. And I think that all the evidence really points to this being Xenoblade 3. I know that a lot of the people in this voice chat right now think that uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 really deserves a... Not Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Xenoblade Chronicles X really deserves a sequel. Yes. <laughs> and I'm, I'm with you. Yes. I'm very yes. much with you, but I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> No, um, I have very, very little faith that it will happen. What? Uh, it's, it's not. It's. It's not like it had low sales or anything. It had. I cry about it all the it time. It had eight hundred thousand sales, which sure, it's the worst amount of sales they've ever had. But like, the game is just. Uh, it's really an interesting case with that game because it is an amazing game, and I talk about this all the time. How I think it was kind of a prototype for Breath of the Wild because that was the big premiere open world game before Breath of the Wild for Nintendo. I thought that was and actually good. Monolith even worked on uh, Breath of the Wild as well. Oh. Okay. I, on on that subject, I thought it was actually used to test to see if it could handle like such a sizable world as Xenoblade Chronicles X and like the whole mirror region. I thought that, that like that's why they put Xenoblade Chronicles X on the Wii U to see if it would be able to handle what they had planned for Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I have not, like, gone into all the details on that to figure out if that was, like, something, but uh, I would not be surprised if it was. That game is, I think, very intertwined with what Breath of the Wild became. But I also want to bring up uh, this comment I saw the other, other day. And again, I haven't gone into, 
like a deep dive on if all these details are real or even if I can figure out if these details are real because they might just be behind the scenes things. But I saw this comment from a renowned leaker and just like industry insider, Emily Rogers, who said that uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 caused a lot of problems for Monolith Soft. Like it was a big project for them. And to the point that like many developers like see it as a bad time in their lives and like they have nightmares about it and they just they do not like uh to think about the game it was just it was such a problematic thing for them to make and while the end product is something amazing i don't know if they look back on it with a a, a very good vision of it i guess it's like it did do a lot for the uh for the company and i like understandably it was very difficult for the developers to go through to uh deal with but i feel as though that it's still would be like the, the, like as as you're saying it would be foolish for them to um uh to not continue the xenoblade franchise uh because it's got like especially after xenoblade chronicles 2 it's gotten such a massive following even people who aren't diehard up or jrpg fans uh, now know and loves Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And it like it, it was one of their best selling games. No, it's it, it, if I'm to my knowledge, it, it was is their best selling game. Definitive Edition might have changed that, I don't know. Did, have they released statistics on Definitive Edition? Because I'm not sure. Last I, I checked, it, I believe that Xenoblade 2 is still leading in sales. I mean like uh first year sales or whatever was it was xenoblade 2 better or i feel like they were probably pretty close because yeah. i know both hit 1 million yeah both were very well received as well and like i said what i see this setting up is uh they're trying to introduce people to both these stories yeah. they're making sure that they're both available because xenoblade 3 is going to tie into both of them which again i keep saying this but we're going to get into that a little bit later <laughs> uh when we go into the theory the theory section because i have a big theory about what it's going to be and i'm super excited to talk about it but yeah i think it's going to involve both just as a as a quick finishing note on that point xenoblade chronicles 2 has sold 2.5 uh, 05 million units and Definitive Edition has sold to uh, 1.48. Now I want to circle back around to uh, the Melee leak here for a second because I want to talk about Jenna Coleman and what the repercussions for this could be if uh, it does end up that what she was saying is true and that she kind of in a way leaked Xenoblade Chronicles 3 before it was supposed to be known because as we all know Nintendo goes to great lengths to stop leaks. Um, there was this story in the past few years that apparently an entire Zelda and Star Fox show made on Netflix was canceled because it got out and people were saying, oh, there's going to be, there might be a new Zelda show and Nintendo shut the whole <laughs> thing down because they didn't want people to know for some reason. And I just, I really hope that this does not spell any consequences for Jenna because I think, uh, it's an, it's an honest mistake, you know? Yeah. I, I, I don't think it will because she's so intertwined in like development of the game uh, and the series as a whole that uh, I, f I think she kind of has to be involved. It might sort of spell some repercussions in, like financially and like uh, like between the two parties, but I, I don't think it will get her fired. We'll see, honestly. It's hard to say. Knowing Nintendo, they would probably, cons especially considering uh, the whole Byleth voice actor situation. If something like that happened, that's uh, true. They might have entirely patched her voice out of the, the game. But I mean, then again, the that situation was also entirely different. I, I really think that is like a good point, though, Pi. That like with Byleth, they went back and changed the entire mm -hmm. English voice actor because of some allegations that came up against them. Mm -hmm. uh, it might be under different circumstances, but uh, it, they are willing to change voice actors like that, apparently. That, I, I actually hadn't heard about that uh, prior to right now. Uh, that's kind of scary. <laughs> Japan has this uh, entire thing where if a celebrity does something a company doesn't like, they will just remove them from the game if they have them in the game. The, there was another situation with... Um, a game called Judgment, which is from the Yakuza franchise, and they had a um, celebrity in it who found out they found out was doing drugs, so they just entirely removed his face from the box. He was the main character. He, they just removed him. So, does anyone have anything else to say about 
the whole Melia leak. Is there any other loose ends that we need to say or state our opinion on? No, I am personally fine. No, I don't. I don't see Melia like returning in any anything like Xenoblade Chronicles related, unless it's definitive edition, like as the first game, or maybe DLC. Like I don't see it happening unless they, for some reason, have reoccurring characters in uh, series. In the, in the games. So Plus three is actually connected to both two and one. So, Pi, you are basically saying that you think um, she was referring to Future Connected. Yeah, I think she was referring to Future Connected. I don't think she was referring to anything else, unless spinoffs for some reason. So even with these new plot details, you don't think that uh, this this has anything, that Melly is coming back, that this is just Future Connected, okay. I have heard of these i haven't heard of these plot details so okay well i get. i guess that's a pr that's a pretty good segue then to go into the imran report imran khan who is now a editor at fanbyte uh did a report recently and he said some pretty interesting stuff when it came to xenoblade chronicles 3 but before we jump into that i think it's uh important to know a little bit about imran and his track record and uh just how reliable as a journalist he may or may not be so imran hasn't really reported on too many rumors himself and a lot of what i could find was still up in the air like metroid prime trilogy which has been rumored for years and a cancelled 3ds fire emblem remake which uh that, that those rumors were swirling around this year we didn't get a d3 it might still potentially be coming but the thing is that he has built a reputation for himself in the industry as a pretty reliable journalist over the years. He hasn't reported on too many rumors. When he does, he's usually right from what I could find. He reported on Final Fantasy Origin rumors ahead of E3 this year with the correct title. In early 2019, he reported on Nintendo working to revive a very publicly cancelled game. And two years later now, Metroid Dread is a thing. So bottom line, I believe Imran is a reliable reporter. What do you guys think just based off of what you just heard? What do you think about Imran? I think that it is quite likely that he is telling the truth. Of course, there are a lot of things that could be lost in translation. Uh, There's definitely a matter of sources, right? Because yeah. when you look at stuff like this, these people get their information from inside sources. And maybe some of the sources gave him some false information. Maybe some of the plot details aren't correct. But I think when we come to the bottom line of is Xenoblade Chronicles 3 a real thing? I think it is. And I even without Imran's report, I thought it was. Like, Monolith has to be working on it. It just makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, for sure. I feel as though this is, like, very much so strengthening, strengthening the rumor, though. So let's get into the actual report, then. The report first source is Jenna Coleman's recent interview, which we've been over, and how she says Xenoblade 3 is a thing. And this is interesting because the interview with Coleman didn't come up until, like, early August. And that's when Imran went ahead and posted this uh, uh, this article of his. So maybe he was waiting to have this little bit more of evidence to stick on to the stuff he had from his no anonymous source. But I don't know. The timing was just kind of weird on it. So take that as you will. I don't think it means that much, but it's just worth mentioning. So in his report here, he says that Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is in active development and is in fact nearing its final stages of completion. The game was set to be revealed earlier this year and released as soon as this winter, but faced optimization issues and pandemic development problems. And then finally, we have the really interesting plot details from him. The ending of the trilogy takes place in the far-flung future with a few returning characters who have outlived their human counterparts from Xenoblade Chronicles and Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Okay, guys. So, that's a lot of info. Im Imran kind of went off there. He went off on a, a lot of notes there. Uh, so, what? okay. What's the deal? Um, well, I think that is interesting because if this is a New Zealand Chronicles game, that implies, just gonna preface this, uh, talking about the ending of Xenoblade Chronicles, of both the uh, games in the trilogy. So at the end, like the new world that they create, uh, sort of, mm. it's very, they're very, they're both very similar to one another. And I think that it's not difficult to assume that those are a part of the same world. And I feel as though that's also backed up by what they're saying in that this is going to include characters who have long outlived the human counterparts from Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2. So that implies that those worlds are interconnected and it means that they're going to have, they're going to have met each other. They're going to be involved with one another. And I feel as though that's going to, that's hinting at something new, but, uh, 
Let me let me g- give me a moment to figure out what I'm trying to say. <laughs> take your time. Take your time. So, um, <laughs> I I like what you're saying there. I kind of agree because it's very not explained at the end of uh, both yeah. of these games what exactly happened when these new worlds were in were, blah, 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 were made. Mm-hmm. So Shulk creates his new world. And then the architect creates the new world for uh, Rex and Pyro in the game. Maybe it was the same world they created. Maybe yeah. when Klaus yeah. created that world, it was simultaneously Alvis and Shulk creating the other world, and they're actually mm-hmm. set on the same plane, but they just haven't found each other yet. Yeah, that, that that's my thought. That's my thought exactly, actually. Because like mm-hmm. Shulk was uh, in the middle of the fight with Zanza, as everyone was sort of um, fight was fighting Malos uh, and Ion. So I want to bring up a interesting detail here, which is development timelines and how they match. So apparently the first Xenoblade was made in uh, four years. Xenoblade X was made in four years as well. Xenoblade 2 was made in three years, which is really interesting uh, since it was made by a smaller team, I believe, than the other two games. And Torna was released three years ago from now, which means that if we're going by Xenoblade 2 standards, then uh, we are due to see the release of a new Xenoblade game. Then again, you can look at Definitive Edition and say, oh, maybe that would have slowed them down. But I remind you also that Monolith Soft has many studios. Like, uh, that's how they're able to work on Breath of the Wild and assist on that with your Kyoto stu- uh, studio while also doing stuff in Tokyo and even other studios that they've opened now too. They're, it's hard to keep track because they keep opening stuff. And there's like 270 something employees now they're get, they're getting up there. They are doing a bunch of stuff. They've got like three, don't they? And I think like the one in Tokyo has like multiple studios there, like All at right. least two. Wow. I know the the based in Kyoto, right? I believe they're actually based in Tokyo, and then Kyoto is their wow. branch that is close to Nintendo and works in tandem with uh, the Nintendo teams to support games like Animal Crossing, mm-hmm. Splatoon, Zelda. Uh, in terms of the development timelines, I feel like like everything that is being brought up, especially with how we're in the time like time frame for a new release, I think that we might get it as early as next year, as you were saying. But personally, I don't see us getting a new installment until like probably 2023 or very late 2022 because of pandemic uh, pandemic issues. Well, I think it's uh, it's interesting if you read into what Emron is saying here, because uh, he mentions in the article that accounting for pandemic-related issues, that's why the game isn't releasing this year. Oh. Like, apparently, according to him, the game was going to be announced earlier this year, maybe like in the February Direct, I'm guessing, and then it would have actually come out this holiday season. And he's saying it could come out as early as sometime early next year, <laughs> or it could be later, uh, but... Again, it's all rumors, but if we're looking at what he's saying, at least. Yes, of course. I'm I'm of the opinion uh, that I think it's probably going to be later next year, just because not that it's not finished. I think it might be ready to go earlier next year, but it's that Nintendo would make it a holiday title or at least want to. Then again, I have no idea. It feels personally, it feels like having it be so early next having it released so early next year feels too good to be true yeah i feel it like of course like the the pandemic issues are much more taken care of at this point um or like they've already sort of they're already sort of beginning to push through that and in their final stages but having as a xenoblade chronicles game especially because if we're expecting a direct later this month in september when we're when we're recording this and like having it be next time ne- next year like say february march like that just feels like it's too short from announcement to release because that's about like a time frame of six months and i'd expect more like nine months you'd think so but like in recent years nintendo has been open to the idea of uh just like announcing games very soon to when they release i think back to paper mario the origami king last year because i think that might be like like the closest they've done that they announced it two months before the game came out 
Oh, wow. Um, I, I feel like they're kind of shortening their marketing cycle on a lot of these games and not announcing them until they're almost ready, which <laughs> is weird to say when we have Breath of the Wild 2 that we've been waiting for for like over two years now. Uh, <laughs> and I think that that's also another interesting thing to pull into uh, to this discussion, which is how Nintendo's year would be structured next year if that would mean Xenoblade would find a better place earlier in the year because i think zelda at this point in time at least i switch my mind every other week (laughs) um is going to be a holiday title it just seems more like that game has more time to cook in the oven uh and just the wording they used to e3 it seems like it's gonna be like even if it reaches a release date next year that's that's very like i i feel like that's strengthening that theory but personally i don't see it releasing like i i feel as though that it probably w- most likely will release next year. When next year is very up in the air. I feel like from announcement to release, especially for a game as big as Xenoblade, it wouldn't be as small as two months. It would be at least like four or five. Of course, yeah. But that, that's that's all I have to say about mm. that. So you mentioned a September Direct too. So let, let's talk about that a little bit because we are recording this on the 11th of uh, September. Uh, Just to put things in perspective, I don't know when the heck I'm going to be able to get this out. Maybe a direct's already been announced by the time I get this video out. (laughs) Um, But there were rumors uh, this last week that there could be a direct this last week. There was a sighting of Monolith Soft's website where they were doing some maintenance, which does not seem to be a thing they do very often. Apparently, it was for nothing, though. There was no direct. But then we get into conspiracy theory territory here because that's what I do. I look way too much into tiny little details for video games for some reason. And (laughs) it is my brand. (laughs) Yeah, but (laughs) what if there was a direct last week? What if there was a direct last week? But PlayStation, they're the culprit because there was a PlayStation (laughs) showcase on Thursday last week. And that's because there was no uh, there was no direct last week because of that, because PlayStation stole the thunder and Nintendo had to move it back. That's why. And there's going to be a direct next week and it's not going to happen. But I'm saying it. Yeah, but I'm saying that would mean that Nintendo and Sony are uh, talking to each other, which would mean they're working on something. (laughs) I don't don't, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I don't think it does though. I think that that means uh, Nintendo saw N- Sony took the week and they were like, shoot, now we have to change our plans. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it would be more more of a situation like that. Like they plan to do a direct this week, but then, oh, Sony took the slot. Let's move it to next week. A, a direct might be coming soon though. Mm. Like, like, we're, like it's been uh, how many months yeah. since the last like proper official direct? Three, three. E three, yeah, that's been like yeah, a, that, that that's been like a good few months, uh, and we're nearing the end of the year. I feel like we're gonna get one more direct at least before November. Mm-hmm. We so, have a history of getting directs in September too, like past five years, I think, since twenty sixteen at least. Uh, there have been directs in some form happening in September. Like there was a three DS direct, there was a Switch direct, a regular one, another regular one. There was the Mario 30th anniversary one. I'm forgetting one, but there was another one. <laughs> there was a lot of directs that happened in September. That that is really interesting. <laughs> yeah. Also, is that whole part about the PS? Oh, the... You cut out there for a second, Will. <laughs> Are you gonna keep the Sony collaboration thing in the video? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's news. Oh, really? <laughs> from Pi. Pi, you have, you have insider sources, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. We have insider sources. My uncle at Nintendo. Obviously, he's it's got to be unofficial. So, could you edit that? Could you edit that with the video? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, another detail I wanted to bring up was this tweet right here, which was also information that recently came to my attention. You know, there was the whole thing about Monolith Soft with uh, the maintenance update, but there was also this tweet from Anua, who is the choir who uh, sang some of the the most beautiful songs in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Shadow of the Lowlands, Our Eternal Land, the day and night themes for both Tantal, not Tantal, but you know, the city, Theoswar, and uh, Indol. And Mm. they said that they were working with the composer, one of the composers, for 
the Xenoblade Chronicles series again. So uh, th that's interesting. I mean, they could have been working with him on something else. I think that he works on stuff besides Xenoblade. I don't know for sure, but I'm like 90% sure that he does. That his only passion is Xenoblade. He's, he's only passionate with Xenoblade. <laughs> the rest of it is just work. Xenoblade is bliss. Yes. He's worked on uh, just a few. Xenoblade, Chrono Trigger, uh, Xeno Gears, Mario Party, uh, Bomberman, uh, Xeno Saga, Shadow Hearts. What the hell is that? Um, so yeah, he has been on like a lot of high profile games. I like even Chrono Trigger. That's amazing. Like that, that's incredible. This yeah. this guy, he's got, he's got a resume right here. But like as far as working with this choir on a recent project. Um, he was the he was one of the lead composers for the uh, entirety of Xenoblade 2, and uh, both uh, both Xenoblade 2 and Torna. But yeah, I guess we have to put on our tinfoil hats here for a second and like think about okay, is this also a hint at Xenoblade Chronicles 3? Yes, it is. Everything's a hint at Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Um. Uh, I think it's a hint at something with Monolith. I mean, everything that we have right now. It's undeniable that this is hinting at something, but it seems as though this game is going to have a similar style to uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, uh, considering how how Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition took a lot of like visual and graphical in like inspiration, or well, not inspiration. Uh, it was very similar uh, visually to uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. So that's I a think good gonna, point. I think we're going to see a lot of the same, very similar details. And we're going to see, I think this is going to be uh, a collaboration on some new Xeno installment. That's a very good point though, uh, Layla, with how they kind of made Xenoblade Chronicles 1 closer to Xenoblade Chronicles 2's art style in Definitive Edition. Uh, like we had Shulken Fiora in Xenoblade 2, and while Definitive Edition does kind of stray from that a little bit, it's closer to the original while kind of still blending too. Um, I love the style. They are blending those art styles. Like, it's, 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 it's interesting, right? They would work together for the most part, those two art styles. Absolutely. But um, I, I think that's also just like, because to make it uh, simultaneously more recognizable and because that's probably what runs best on the Switch. Yes. Uh, because like, you, like all of the Xenoblade Chronicles and installments are sort of, I, I feel as though going forward, we're going to see a lot like the est established style, and I guess, for lack of a better word, vibe that Xenoblade Chronicles 2 has established is going to be carried on and developed and evolved as the series continues on, at least on this console. And I feel with what's going on with Anua and uh, Yasunori Mitsu and their collaboration, that is definitely on, uh, on Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Yeah, so I have I have one more part of this report from Imran that I want I want to go into detail a little bit more on, and that is the game is aiming for more character models on screen at once than any previous title, accounting for both playable characters and enemies. What do we think this means? What what is this hinting at? Because I have an I have another tinfoil hat theory that I want to drop on you guys here in a second, and I want to see the reaction. But first, you tell you you tell me what do you think this means? Well, I know in Future Connected they they did the whole what was it Ranger Pond Scout Spectre. Force thing on Pond Spectre. So they could be trying to do something like that. So like maybe the characters of a mini army. <laughs> I definitely do agree. This is very exciting for me personally because this is because uh, I feel as though that this is going to be sort of not entirely reworking but this is going to like this is obviously hinting at some kind of new combat mechanics and uh like this is going to change up a lot of the gameplay also yeah. it, it's going to be something that is going to change the gameplay style and the combat loop uh of this upcoming game and is going to like it because it's aiming to have more models on screen i mean that was already sort of done in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, uh, because they had like twice the the player models on screen yeah. at once. So, should this be right with it uh, blending, or with it having like story aspects of of both prior games? I feel as though that it's going to be some kind of blend of the two combat uh, combat styles, or something completely different. I'm very much so looking forward to that. I feel as though this is 
hinting towards some kind of gameplay overhaul, personally. Okay. All right. Are you ready? Not really, but go ahead. Crazy thought. Crazy thought. But when I hear more character models on screen than any previous title, my mind jumps to the one game that Nintendo, well, the one series Nintendo has been collaborating with a few different times on different series uh, that it really brings in a whole lot of character models on screen, which is Dynasty Warriors. What if this whole report is a misread and it's not Xenoblade Chronicles 3, but it is Xenoblade Warriors? And that explains why it's also a collaboration between two and one. That would be... You can't do this to me now. <laughs> what the hell? That's why, that is why I didn't tell you this beforehand. This is one of the big surprises I wanted to leave to drop on you guys during the discussion for a reaction. <laughs> so you're saying that this is going to be something similar to that of Age of Calamity? I'm saying that uh, when I read that sentence, that's what my mind jumped to. And then I thought, oh, all this collaboration stuff that's been building up. That makes sense. A lot of that points to, uh, like, I, I see what you mean. And a lot of the evidence that we've got right now definitely is supportive of that. Personally, I'd enjoy a, a new proper installment, but that's a very interesting thought that I think does have some backing to it. What with the, like, as you mentioned before, the, the increased player models. That's really interesting. I, I do think that is a possibility. Mm -hmm. Now, I definitely am with you there. I don't want to see a Xenoblade Warriors. I'd rather see a continuation of the main series. But uh, I just, I saw this, I read it, and I was like, okay, a lot of times when you have reports like this, there were some points that they will get right, but there's a lot of stuff they won't. And uh, also, there's times where, like, the person that's reporting on this doesn't have all the information. They're just giving yeah. what they know, and sometimes what they know is, it points you to what it not actually is, but there's still some semblance of the truth in there and i just thought man what if w what if it actually was that i i mean like i'm just processing this that's 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 <laughs> like just wow i mean that would be really cool <laughs> i would i wouldn't love i'd really love to see that um as Zingley warriors but at the same time just not at the expense of um uh of like a main series installment that's that's the way yeah. i see it Okay, so let's get into some theories now, all right? Let's do that. Yes! I love theories. theories! Let's go! Wow. <laughs> Please keep that in. Please keep that in. <laughs> yeah, we've ta we talked about a lot here today. It's been a wild road. Indeed. But we we're here. Mm -hmm. This is the part you've all been waiting for. Indeed. And that's where we, br we, we break it down. Indeed. We're going to break down mm -hmm. what this is all about, what oh, yeah. these rumors mean, mm -hmm. what these rumors don't mean. Indeed. What's this game going to be? What is Xenoblade 3? All right. Oh, yeah. So who has who, who has an idea? Indeed. Throw an idea at me. Any idea. Throw it. It's going to be a continuation of the Xenoblade series. My gosh. Thank you. Thank you. Where thank did you what? get that one? No. Where did you get that one? It's not. It's less so of a theory, but I just want to talk about uh, one thing that I find peculiar. What Imran mentioned in his report was that this, of, of course, like this is uh, the new game is going to be continuation of the of the story in the far flung future. I'm just curious about like how like how that's going to uh, impact the I guess sort of rosters of characters that we have. Uh, of course, in Xenoblade Chronicles 1, there are a lot of characters who can live for thousands upon thousands of years and outlive Homs or humans, such as High End here, Nopon to a lesser extent, and especially Machina. In Xenoblade 2, they're, like, the whole plot of that game is basically talking about immortality and sort of the lack thereof as well, and, like, memories and whatnot. That was a big theme. And I'm just curious, because how... Do the blades outlive their human counterparts unless some blades that we already know as established characters turn into flesh eaters? Yeah. The only the only race I can think of that has a long lifespan in two is the Endolians. The Indolian. people from Indolian. Yeah. People because a lot of the characters who are who are immortal, quote unquote, which are the blades, can't live without their human counterparts. Pyra and Mithra, I could see, I could see living because they're Aegises, 
but <laughs> you just card. But a lot of the other characters I can't see uh, surviving that long. So I'm just very curious to see how that plays out. I think what you touched on there is super interesting, which is uh, like how those different characters would work in this new game, which I think it would have to be different drivers. Like they'd be the same blades, but like different personalities, different drivers. And that's the interesting thing about doing a sequel that involves Xenoblade Chronicles 2, because that game is so set in that era because of the rules of that world which is that yeah. everything, so many characters can live on. I want everyone with the more ordained accent. Yes, the more ordained accent can live on too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so many characters can live on, but be totally different characters. Yeah, yeah, no, like the core crystal was passed down. Like that's that's definitely a possibility. It's keeping that, uh, that one, th you know, the one scene that they had where like, oh no, my past driver's dead. What am I going to do? Oh, I get a new driver. Oh, I have a notebook that has all my past drivers in it. Nice. Oh, I don't have a notebook in my past drivers. I'm depressed. Who was my past driver? Oh, that was my past driver. Now I'm depressed. <laughs> but that, um, I feel like if they did that, I, I feel like they probably wouldn't because like they made each game to be a standalone title. Like you can like experience one without knowing it, the thing about the other. If they're going to take that sort of that combination of um, of like the plot lines, I feel like that would require a lot of storytelling and backstory, which would just break up the flow of this new game. It would be focused. It would be focusing on characters' pasts and uh, and whatnot, like quite a bit. That, I feel like that wouldn't be good for uh, storytelling. Imagine the prologue cutscene if that's what they did. Imagine how long it would be. It'd be very distasteful. Yeah. Like, imagine that prologue cutscene, just like, a thousand years ago, a man took up the Aegis sword, and then it just, and then it's just like, nah, a world. <laughs> a world no vast, rushing across no. the Calm down. Calm down. No. <laughs> We're attacking a throne right flank. <laughs> For a bunch of soulless I want to go back to that idea you had, Layla, of it being a staple in the Xeno games of them being very disconnected stories, even though you have that connection at the end of two. Three potentially being this game that connects both of the two, that would be really interesting. Like, are we to believe this rumor from Imran that both one and two characters are being combined together and that? some of them might retain memories from what was the past two games and that this will actually be a game that you need to play the other two to understand or is it going to be more of a thing where it's a sequel to xenoblade chronicles 2 mostly and a lot of those characters can still be there and a part of the story but it still be its own story because they are now essentially new characters the character designs are the same but they are living new lives now i i think i think that's ve that's very interesting to think about uh, but like that would require a lot of, that would still require a lot of backstory and storytelling like exposition because even if they're expecting people to know exactly what's going on like oh you have to have played uh, the past two games to understand what's going on that would still require a lot of backstory because of the setting like what happened after the new worlds were made how did they meet each other what exactly happened in that past that we're not seeing uh, that would require a lot of backstory, and I feel like that would be very difficult to tell. That's just gotten me thinking, how are they going to tell the story if this is the direction that they're going to take? I think another interesting thing to bring up is Pyra, and how she could become a part of this, because uh, it's an ambiguous, ambiguous ending at the end of Xenoblade Chronicles 2, where you get this line from her, and uh, there's many different ways to interpret it. Some people, like me, might have just interpreted it originally as, I love you because that's like the whole thing throughout the entire game, that growing relationship between her and Rex. But then also there's an interpretation that she is saying, hello, my name is Pyra. Sorry to interject, but I believe that is actually what she said because of a few various sources actually looking in like the game's code and like its script and that, it, that being the line that they found that was supposed to be played there. 
And that makes things really interesting if you want to continue the story from Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and potentially Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and just make 3 like the crossover game. Because Pyra would not remember anything that happened in Xenoblade Chronicles 2. She would have her new life to remember with Rex, which Rex would potentially be dead in this game if we're listening to that rumor. But she would be a person that we're not familiar with anymore. Yes. So <sighs> there are so many things here that makes sense but don't make sense and how exactly would you pull this off if we're going by what the rumor says and i feel like there's a lot of pieces to this puzzle that we really don't have yet in the story and the theories and how this is going to be taken thinking about it now there's not really a cohesive way to tell the story of both games in this new game so we're going to we're going to have a lot to, uh, a lot uncovered to us as time progresses so I want to bring up a theory of mine now, which uh, kind of revolves around everything being put together. Yeah. Uh, but I think Future Connected is the main key because, you know, it's in the name. Future <laughs> Connected. Exactly. <laughs> oh, you don't um, say. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that because there was like nothing really mentioned of, too much about the future in Future Connected? Oh. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of a little side story, but still called Future Connected. So what's the deal? Yo. We have the Fog King, but that's that's about it. Um, what's the connected part, though? Like, okay, so here's where the, the connectedness comes in. Break it down for me, Zena. Future Connected takes place on the ruins of the Bionis. Uh, Bionis shoulder is still there, but it's the new world. So, like, the ruins of the Bionis exist in this new world that Shulk and Alvis created at the end of the first game. We also know that Rex, well, not exactly Rex, but Al, not Alvis, Klaus, <laughs> so many names, uh, created a kind of new world for the inhabitants of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 world at the end of that game. So, what mm -hmm. if this world that uh, both Alvis and Shulk created and the world that Klaus created is one and the same, and that the ruins of the Bionis and the ruins of the Titans both exist on this same ocean plane, but uh, you just, they don't know each other yet. They have not found each other yet. I believe Shulk even mentions in the end of Xenoblade Chronicles 1 how he wants to go out and see the world, the vast new world they've created, and what's there. And maybe he'd find another group of people that had their world collapsed into this one as well. So that could kind of be where we see this crossover idea come Mira? together. But then, yeah, yes. I, I was actually about to say, no, where does Xenoblade no. come from? Okay, well, yes. Pi, wait, because Xenoblade X is- I said the way, the way no. I said it was a joke. It's not a joke, it's yes. Xenoblade I know, Chronicles. I know it's joke. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> X is part of this. Okay, so Future Connected has this whole thing with portals, right? And we see these uh, fog beasts coming out of the portals. And maybe I'm grasping at straws here, but I think that if you're going to do this crossover game, I, I think that Xenoblade Chronicles X deserves its due. I think that it deserves its due. I don't know if it's going to get its due, but I think it does. It and how you do that is with the portals. So, <laughs> I'm going to sound crazy here, but uh, <laughs> Black Tar. The lyrics of Black Tar. <laughs> no. Has anyone ever no. thought about that? Has I, anyone ever thought about oh, that? Oh, no. Wait, which, which part? There's, there's, many, there's many parts to the part of Black Tar. So, these are the lyrics I'm talking about. Black Tar. It gets you. Wherever you go, they could find you quickly. It's sticky. However you try to tough it out, you just can't beat them. So, apply fog those beast. lyrics to the Fog Beasts. Okay. Because no matter how hard you try to beat them, unless you have, you know, the ether, the ether field, it doesn't work. And, you know, X wouldn't, like the people of X, the people of, well, I guess we can now firmly call them the people of Mira because they've colonated there, are, well, not, like, a bit un unbeknownst to all the powers that 
like ether has because they were still experimenting with ether and they were able to like siphon enough ether to create weapons and things and so on but they wouldn't know how to create such a field that would like you know hinder the powers of the fog beasts to where they could beat them so if huh huh that is an interesting thought i know it's a crazy stretch to look at that it is a very particular lyrics <laughs> but uh, i i think it's a really interesting one to think about and the fact that these portals could be related to Mira because Chase, you brought this up earlier and I don't know if we had this in the recording might've been before it, but uh, you said that the portals could be how both two and mm -hmm. one interconnect and not that they share the same world. I think yeah. that the portals could be how Mira connects and that two and one do still share the same world. And then like this whole black tar idea also goes back to the idea of there's something about this planet. What is, what is the something about this planet? <laughs> <laughs> is it the fog beast? Is there some kind of hidden power we haven't found out about yet? I don't know. What? Is there a third Klaus? I... <laughs> <laughs> um, what? Because I think we need to, in, in terms of how X fits into this, I think we need to look at Xenoblade Chronicles 2 DLC uh, with how they involved Elma in the Land of Challenge. So essentially, we know that I think it's pretty much confirmed. All three of the of the worlds, that being one one's world, two's world, and X's world, respectively. At least within, like, I'm not sure with how Mira fits into this because I have like gears turning. But we, I think we're aware, and we can definitively say that one and two take place in different worlds. Mm -hmm. And X, my thought was that maybe. This the world of Mira could possibly be the new world that they created. But then again, that also doesn't really make sense because in one and two's world, they they erased the entire universe that Earth itself existed in, and that t never happened in the timeline of X. So it could be to the point that like human civilization or Homs and humans if we're saying they both combined into the same world, eventually got back to the same point and we're in a cycle. And that's what leads to X. And then right. it's just a continuous cycle. Right. I feel like that might be a little bit pretentious though. It might be- my, my... It's, it's, it's definitely a stretch, right? I'm just <laughs> yes. I'm spitballing here, but- <laughs> An old theory I heard pertaining to X is that when Klaus split up the universe or destroyed the universe or whatever, he essentially, split it up so obviously he created the new world that shulk lives on and he sent humans with the knowledge of technology and all that all the way back and then those humans ended up creating the what are they called in in the ganglion ganglion yeah humans are the descendants of people who created the ganglion a theory is that humans were sent back in time to a point where they ended up creating that that race during the time that obviously Schultz would have been like doing whatever. I I, I had an, a, a very old theory about X. I don't know if it still hold up. I'd have to do more research, but I remember my original theory of how X tied into Xenoblade Chronicles and Xenoblade Chronicles 2 was that it is the new world that they created that's yeah. like what x is well no, wait, no 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 i'm thinking i'm thinking of it differently no no um the original universe was the one where earth imploded and they go to mira after mira mm -hmm. the civilization increases and they go back to normal like human living and, and as a result they create the orbital space station and from the orbital space station they find that infinite energy source which is what makes mira so special and like so special and important why they were all able to communicate with like the napon with the napon knowing napon and the english and like the people knowing english or whatever language setting you had it just it Great. like that that's the that is the power source that was allowing all of this to happen so when they find that power source they begin to harness it and klaus a scientist who is trying to lead lead the project is like well i can use this to become a god 
and it just goes into Xeno into the Xenoblade Chronicles universe. Uh, I th I feel like there's a few plot holes to that because the conduit, there is. which is there the is. Uh, which is like Almost. technically it's a it's a reference or um, the Zohar a parallel. From it's, Xeno it's, Gears. Yeah, it's a parallel to Xenogears. Uh, or Xenosaga, I don't know. I think both. Uh, but... but the Zohar was, uh, the conduit was also canonically in the Xenoblade universe. It was canonically found in Africa, the same as Xenogears. Yeah, I know nothing about. <laughs> Well, don't they say in Xenoblade 2, though, that, like, the conduit Primordia appeared to is them? Africa. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's an interesting... Oh my gosh, Chase, you just opened up a new possibility. What if, like, the Earth that they... <laughs> the Earth they escape from in Xenoblade X is, like, one Earth, and then they they find Mira, which is, like, the other Earth, and then, like, oh, well, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. <laughs> very, this is very pretentious. <laughs> we're, we're grasping at straws here. We don't really have much concrete evidence with what we're saying. It's it's fun, though. You know, it's it's theorizing. It is fun. We're, splitting, we're, we're splitting hairs underneath a tinfoil hat. That's what we're doing. True. Yeah. True. That's the whole point. Yeah. We're meant to be... But, yeah, that's kind of what theory... And... That's what these theories are. We aren't... We are trying, yeah, and that, that's also just, that also goes out to the audience. Most of the theories that we're having here are, like, backed by nothing. They're just discussion ideas. And They're I know I have ideas. some, yeah, yeah I, I literally have gameplay ideas of how gameplay could tie, like, how could it, like, how it could be in Xenoblade Chronicles 3 if we're going with the universe, like, the universe is being connected, and, like, chapter one is on this side of the portal and then chapter two is on the other side of the portal and it just switching off between the characters and so on and it could be something like that and you're already exploring to one like midpoint in the story where they like they coincide they, they meet each other they connect mm. and from that point they're connected trying to figure out this problem of why their universes are just smashing together but um, we, that's still unbacked, and um, the only universal connection that we have is future connected, and that's kind of like the, that's like the little legit concrete source of information that we can go off of and theorize off of is future connected because all we know is that in future connected there's a portal to the other universes. That is all we know, legitimately, all we know, and that just brings up so many questions. Now I have a question for everyone. What do you mm -hmm. think about the idea of this being a collaboration work? Like, of seeing both Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2, and maybe even X, in one story, and it not being just a brand new story that takes place in another branch off of Klaus's idiotic move? Mm -hmm. I would love that, but I don't think it's very plausible, because the more that I'm thinking about it, the more that I'm starting to believe that uh, X it truly is just a very completely disconnected universe to mm -hmm. one and two. The, the ending of X doesn't really have like a tie-in to the other uh, stories. It's very, it's very disconnected to the other games. I guess more of my question is, uh, do you want that? Do you want these games to be connected and that oh, to absolutely. be where they go? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do. Absolutely. Like the. The only thing that I could see being a problem is the fact that you would have to play Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and Xenoblade Chronicles 2 to play Xenoblade Chronicles 3. There still needs to be a separate, like a way to have a separate story as we were talking about earlier, how it'd be very confusing to have those like same old characters from Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and Xenoblade Chronicles in it because then people would be like, well, if there's these same characters, then I have to play one and two to play three. And when in reality, it could be, it could very well, you don't have to. And because, you know, like Monolith has a very good way of being able to have like each game, each game's story is not interconnected in like, like a bridging storyline. It's more of like a path along the other path. And I'm curious to see if they're going to do another path along the path or a path that, that coincides everything together. And it's just, it's very perplexing to me of what like they could be doing because <laughs> I don't want it to be something where you have to play one and two to play it because I want people who are new to the games who have never given a sh it a shot to see Xenoblade Chronicles 3 and say hey maybe I should give Xenoblade Chronicles 3 a shot yeah. because it doesn't seem to be connected and 
um, like I, I of course want there to be connections, but I don't want them to be so heavily tied that new players would have to play one and two to play three. If you know what I'm saying. It should be like how Final Fantasy likes to do its things, which is either in a completely new world or in a world in like a say the same world, but like years or millennia since like the previous game or for example with Final Fantasy XII it's a continuation of a world from one of the spin-offs it's and Final Fantasy XIV is technically also a continuation of that same world it's just like they, they like to s sometimes use the same world but use it in such a context that previous stories they don't need to factor in you don't need to actually take them in it's like with um technically like what uh nintendo are doing with um legend of zelda if you mm -hmm. take a look at it that way i have a very interesting take on this go on i believe uh very much that this is going to be a crossover game i don't know how much of fan bites report is completely true i don't know if it's going to be set in the far-flung future or anything like that, but I do think that based on Future Connected, this is going to be a crossover game that at least crosses over both Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2. I don't know how much I'm on board with that, though. I mm -hmm. don't know if bringing them together is the best idea because it brings up the potential to fail at that because that's not something they've done before. They're very good at telling these great epic stories that stand alone, but when you try to tie yeah. that together and make something more out of two stories that are already great, I'd, I, I'm just, I'm not sure. Like if we get mm -hmm. a sequel to two, I think that could maybe actually work. But if it's a sequel to both of them? I'm not entirely sure for one. I don't think one would do very good for a sequel and like you said chase i don't think a sequel to both of them would work uh, i think only two is the one that would do well with a sequel game uh but yeah. like how the heck do you do that if it's still called xenoblade 3 doesn't make any sense um <laughs> <Xenoblade> chronicles <laughs> 2 too but yeah it scares me it, uh the idea of them doing both of those together at the same time they could pull it off but they could also not the big question is what's gonna be the new blade What's going to be the new foreign blade? What are they going to pull now? <laughs> who is the new Xenoblade? Xeno no, who, who is... <laughs> <laughs> my, my thought is the only other game that can have a sequel is the al also the only other game that uh, Monolith Soft seem to like to uh, disregard as existing. <laughs> yeah. Xenoblade Chronicles X. Yes, that X actually team. is a game that could easily be set up for a sequel. It was set up for a sequel. Yeah, it is set up for a sequel, but it didn't sell. It didn't sell like good enough to be like available. It didn't sell good enough. There were all those development problems. It was just a big project and it's unsure. It's uncertain if Monolith would want to touch it again. Yeah, especially because not many people had Wii U's and if they did have a Wii U, they probably didn't have it for long before, you know, Starting out. <laughs> yeah. I love the Wii U though. Don't don't get me yeah, wrong. I, I, I love, love that Wii U. thing. I feel like we've gone on massive tangents. So. That's that's okay, you know. It's I feel like we've had some great discussions here. Uh tangents are needed, you know? A lot of the a lot of the discussion, like uh in terms of theories, has just been a lot of um has just been a lot of stuff that's been like not really backed up. I'm not sure. Like, I mean, like, it's up to you, you know, because I'm very Layla. Uh, interested to see that it's your I, video. I am a Zelda <laughs> theorist. I, this is what I do. And I take little details that mean nothing and turn them into Some, a 20 minute long theory. All the right? shadows! The shadows of the trees! <laughs> <laughs> yes. Look at this. Look at this Breath of the Wild 2 trailer that we have been watching for the past three years. What does it mean? Over 30 videos for three minutes of footage. You do not <laughs> tell me that we are going off on tangents here today that mean nothing. This is this is good stuff. <laughs> okay. This is what I, the people want to see. Because I feel like I, I just. Okay, never mind. I just my my thought was that like you know like we we've had at least some semblance of a structure and like backing to what we're saying, and now we're just going into like 
biased hopes and opinions, and it's just great. <laughs> <laughs> I want Juju to return. Juju should come back. Absolutely not. Facts. Bringing out my opinions here. Bring back <laughs> Juju. Bring back Tatsu. Make them the villains. <laughs> Golf, Juju. <laughs> I do have a theory, though. I, I, have, a, I have a good theory. A good theory. Uh, so, I remember I had thought of this before. One time when I was just thinking about Xenoblade Chronicle. The next Xenoblade Chronicles game could be. Because I... Like, at, for a very long time after Xenoblade Chronicles 2 was done with, I was fairly confident that a Xenoblade Chronicles 3 would never happen. But now, I'm as, as I'm thinking about it, if there is to be one, I could see with, like, the new, like, with the old characters, I could see them showing up in the next game, but not being, Cameos. like, yeah, yeah, exactly that. Like, they're, they're not like big in the story they like show up every once in a while they might be a deus ex machina for the party at one point but they aren't like a big thing for the story they're like a lead they're like the leader of like a colony or something like that along like along those sorts they're not going to be out there all the time they're not going to take time like say like oh yeah i'm going to go I on this like adventure that. with you guys and leave um the colony behind no they're just gonna they're gonna be there they're not going i to, really like that like yeah yeah they're gonna be there, not gonna be like there. what if this takes place in a world that is a merge of one and two but like it's a new threat after the world has been recreated and all these other characters are living on as like npcs and like maybe some of them are important story characters mm -hmm. but like you're on a new adventure like there's a new party and everything but like you're going through a world with old characters. And hey, it could even be a, a story where Pyro and Mithra are evil because of Rex's death. <laughs> that that's, that would that, be that, something. That's, that's interesting. But th there's also the fact that um, we still don't know if Pyro and Mithra regained, like, retained their memories <laughs> from, you know, being uh, deaded. Yeah, deaded. But then there's also the fact that Malos. I, I don't understand the Aegis is completely because they just they have like this switch. They switch it off sometimes and they switch it on. When they switch it on, it's just God mode. And they switch it off and say, "Oh no, I can't do that." It's very interesting because if you it'd be very cool to have a story where some of the past characters are maybe being misled in their um like in their ideals, like misled in their thoughts like they are trying to do something that they think is good but in reality it is like Juju. not good yeah <laughs> 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 they could be a part of it and it's like they like they're literally leading like a lost cause journey and our new characters are like are trying to like stop them because it's like what are you doing kind of deal because like what if they're trying to colonize the area and they don't think yeah, it's just a lot of things that can go about, and there's just a lot of speculation you can go off of. There's a lot. There's a lot of potential there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, you guys got any other ideas? I'm, I'm kind yeah, of tapped I'm, out. I'm, I don't I'm know. A little bit tapped out too. You, you know, in Xenoblade Chronicles One, there was this one quest about a banana, and this banana has got me thinking. Like, why? Why would they have a banana? And then I thought, wait, bananas have enough. Like they have a they have a, a little tidbit of radiation in them, that where if you oh were to gosh. eat a bunch of bananas, you would die. So, my theory Nuclear is Nuclear fallout it, from bananas. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh! Wow, it's insane. So I think that that about covers it for our discussion. We, uh, oh my gosh, had a lot to say. Um, Oof. I hope you guys enjoyed what we had to say. Maybe we had something good to say. Maybe you learned something about these rumors <laughs> that you did not know before, and now you are a believer. Or maybe you're not. Maybe we'll get a Nintendo Direct next week. Maybe we won't. Anyway, um, that's going to be about it, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining us here today. And if you got this far, I applaud you. My goodness, you, <laughs> you, you are a supporter like no other. Um, and uh, yeah, I want to thank all my wonderful friends here for joining me here today it means so much to me guys that you could come on down and talk about xenoblade with me this was super fun thank you so much 
No, I had an amazing time. Thank you, uh, big, uh, big, uh, uh, Ma- Master Chief. Uh, yeah. It's only five in the morning. It's all right. So yeah. Um, do you guys have anything? Can I plug my non-existent Twitch? Yeah, that that's what I was gonna ask. Uh, any anything oh. to to say? I'll leave it in the description too. But like, you can say it here now if you have anything uh, you want to promote. I go now. See you. Oh. Uh, Pi actually left. All right. Well, uh, thank you to Pi for coming by. You two, any anything, throw it out there. Well, yeah, I'm Ukulela. Uh, I stream at I stream on Twitch. Uh, I believe Zeno said that my Twitch will be in the description. Um, I do speedruns and I play games and I do dumb stuff. So yeah, thank you so much for Zeno for having me on. And I I had a lot of fun and I really appreciate it been a pleasure chase and anything i don't know if you have anything to plug uh, but also you can ju- you can just say something if you want uh, yeah I, I don't really have anything to plug but i do have it's more like something like a forthcoming thing i am working on being able to stream and film video and make youtube videos themselves and i it's been a little project i've been working on for a little while now i probably will be starting in a few months so uh the next video right not like the next video on your channel but the next video that i'm a part of i may very well have something to plug we'll, we'll have to collaborate and stuff it'll be amazing okay. um but yeah. all my videos are <laughs> going to be collaborations with Zeno. oh boy <laughs> stay tuned folks it's gonna it's gonna be good um It'd yeah, be epic. I'll plug something myself. Subscribe to the channel, please. <laughs> <laughs> I, c- I could use a I could use a, f- a few more of those. There's like a little there's there's a there's a button with like a thumbs up too. If you could like click that for Zeno, please, it would make him really happy. Yeah, and, and like, also like there's there's this uh, there's a like bell shaped thing. Like, like yeah, make sure yeah, to yeah, yeah. that as well. You could also yeah, comment yeah. down below and tell us what you guys thought too because algorithm likes that yeah (laughs) also because i want to hear what you have to say but also because the algorithm likes that (laughs) we'd love to hear what you have to say yeah i i read them all i do i i love the comments throw them at us guys what do you think of our theories thank you guys again for watching i think that's about gonna do it for us uh and we'll see you soon maybe Maybe we'll have a post discussion if they if they announce it in a direct this week. We'll be na- back next week. You may get a live reaction to it. All of us. Oh there. boy, that that would be amazing. Um, thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll see you soon. Bye bye. No, let me do this again. Let me do this again. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna do this entire section over again. And it's gonna be flawless. Okay, watch. Which section? So the actual. <laughs> 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 Mackina dudes, let me tell you, they they they'd be living the long life. They, they'd be the people that'd be writing depressing haikus. Let me tell you, because they just live so long.